Back in February of 2021, M1 Mac users started to notice what seemed to be excessive usage of the internal SSD. And this appeared to be down to a lot of memory swapping, where data in the memory is temporarily moved to the SSD to free up resources, and then loaded back in as required. Then later, reports began to surface of even more extreme SSD usage, the worst of which seemed to be tens of terabytes of data written in a matter of weeks. And this is a concern, because SSDs have a finite lifespan, and every time you write some data, that lifespan reduces a little. And this is a bigger concern when you've got a computer like the Mac, where the SSD is soldered to the motherboard. I made a number of videos at the time, and uh, if you want to know more technical detail, I've set up a playlist with all of the M1 SSD content. But now, here we are six months on, and there still aren't any widespread reports of drive failures in M1 machines. In fact, hardly any of the tech outlets are talking about this issue at all. So has the problem gone away? Did it even exist in the first place? Uh, here are my final thoughts, and I do have something interesting to share. Uh, just to be clear at the outset, I've always said that the vast majority of M1 users do not need to worry. The SSD in your M1 Mac will almost certainly outlast other key components in the machine. Now, it turns out that there are a number of things which can cause a higher than normal amount of data writing to the SSD. And it seems that the most extreme cases occurred when all of these things were happening simultaneously. But before we run through those things, it's important to state that users only knew about this activity because of third-party reporting software, like SmartMon tools. And that software could be reporting things incorrectly. Different vendors implement Smart in different ways. Apple doesn't provide a tool specific to their SSD, so we can't be 100% certain that the figures reported by the tool are actually an accurate representation of what's going on. I did a video that explains how SSDs work and why this might be the case. Again, that's in that playlist I mentioned. But let's assume that M1 does write to the SSD much more than expected. What's the cause? Well, partly it's that memory swapping behavior that we mentioned. Of course, all computers do this, but the M1 seems to do it more than the previous Intel Macs, especially that 8 gigabyte M1 model. And that's not really a surprise, because the M1 shares its memory between the CPU, the GPU, and all of those machine learning cores. It's completely fine for regular day-to-day -day computing, but the M1 is such a powerful chip that a lot of people aren't using these entry-level machines for just day-to-day -day computing. Add in all the YouTube hype, and you've got a lot of users pushing these machines very hard in pro-level apps, because they can do it. But eight gigabytes is a little bit light for these scenarios, and so inevitably, you end up with a lot of memory swapping. The second reason for those high data writes seem to be connected with a bug in Rosetta. That's the software that's used to translate Intel or x86 apps to Apple Silicon. And we conducted a survey to try and gather some usage data to see if we could see any patterns to this. And we did get some insights, and it seemed that x86 games and x86 Adobe apps were big culprits. Of course, we're not professional statisticians, and with the benefit of hindsight, we can see how we might have gathered the data in a different way to get some more usable results. Uh, and it's fair to say that we didn't list every possible app, so please don't interpret this as some sort of finger-pointing uh, Adobe or game developers. As time has progressed, many of those apps now have native Apple Silicon versions. Uh, and it's possible that Apple was quietly fixing the issues without admitting anything, naturally. Uh, it certainly does seem that Apple has made some specific quiet fixes that are part of the Mac OS 11.4 release. Something else that we found in the data was that uh, those who are experiencing these excessive data writes were often Google Chrome users. I'm not saying Google Chrome was entirely responsible, of course, but Chrome has always been the butt of jokes in the web development industry for being a bit of a memory hog. Um, that's probably not true anymore. Uh, but I did do some testing, and I found that Chrome was writing or caching a lot of data to the SSD when it was streaming video, uh, something that Safari and Edge didn't do. This drive caching behavior can be switched off, but many users might not know to do that. And I also think it's entirely possible that some users were downloading the Intel version by mistake. So long days spent watching YouTube would quickly add to that data written, particularly if Chrome was running through Rosetta. Now, it also turns out that even if you're not a Chrome user, you might still be using apps with Chrome embedded. A subscriber of the channel, Ian Gao, reached out to me about a month ago with a bit of a discovery. He's got a 16-gig M1 Mac Mini with a 512-gig SSD, 
and he is still seeing what he calls ludicrous mode disk writing activity. 136 terabytes written to date, and he's using macOS 11.5. So it seems not all of the issues are yet fixed, and this is an interesting insight. Ian did some investigating, and what he noticed was something called NWJS Helper in his activity monitor. And this is a package of tools that's necessary for apps that are built in nw.js, a JavaScript framework. Nothing sinister about that at all. Uh, what Ian noticed was that there was a renderer process attached to this, consuming 29 gigabytes of RAM. In a machine with 16 gigs of RAM, it's inevitable then that some, if not most, of that memory usage is being written to the SSD. And it's easy to see how that could add up. In Ian's case, he saw 15 terabytes written to the SSD in just two days. And as soon as he killed the process, that ridiculous disk activity stopped. Ian believed that the renderer is related to Chrome, even though he was using Safari and Firefox. And that's because many apps come with Chrome or other tools for providing web views embedded into the code. And that raised another question. Is the embedded code optimized for M1? I put that question to Ian, and he kindly did some more research. And he found that it is indeed an Intel or x86 application. In fact, he noticed other helper apps and processes that are also Intel binaries. Whilst the main source code of some apps may be Apple Silicon optimized, some of the third-party libraries that they rely on may not be. Uh, and this certainly explains a lot. Ian hasn't actually managed to figure out which app is launching this process, and I've never seen anything like it on my M1 Mac, uh, but it, this may be a helpful pointer to others who are still seeing these high data rights. So is the problem fixed? Well, I think it's difficult to give a straight answer to that. I suspect there are many processes, like the one we just talked about, that when they're being translated by Rosetta, somehow manage to consume RAM. And that in turn results in memory swapping and excessive disk writing. But I expect that as these individual apps are rewritten for Apple Silicon, the issue will obviously go away. As I've said before, Apple, or rather the company and engineers that Apple bought, really know how to make SSDs. And there are no wide reports of SSD failures in either M1 Max or Intel Max. Consider the health data for Ian's SSD. It suggests that his is only 5% worn, and it still has all of its available spare capacity. And remember that an SSD doesn't immediately fail when it gets to reporting 100% used. That's the minimum warranted expectancy that the manufacturer sets. The actual expectancy could be considerably more. This transition to Apple Silicon is a huge undertaking. Uh, anyone buying these early M1 machines should expect that there will be teething issues. And this is just one of them. So my final conclusion is this. Yes, I think there has been an issue. And I think the software tools are reporting correctly. I think there is a tiny proportion, and I do mean tiny, who will see their SSD fail earlier than expected. But the vast majority won't have a problem. I believe the SSDs in these Macs are very good, and probably use various types of caching and cell emulation to cater for all of this swap activity, uh, because it's part of the M1's design. And as a result, I don't think we need to worry ourselves, and time seems to be bearing that out. Famous last words. So my advice is to keep your M1 Mac up to date with the latest version of Mac OS, and just keep an eye on things. But please, don't worry about it. Enjoy your rather brilliant M1 computer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks in advance for all of your likes, shares, and subs. And let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And I'll see you next time for some more geekery.